Hello friends, welcome back to our channel, Best Freaking Friends Forever. Um, thank you again for tuning in. If you have not subscribed or commented, if you want to, please do so down below. Um, so we're going to continue today with Mel Gibson Week. Um, he is, we're going to talk about two more movies of his. We're going to talk about Pocahontas, and we're going to talk about Braveheart. So we'll start with Pocahontas. So its release date was June 23rd of 1995. It had a huge budget, or at least I feel like it did, of $55 million. Um, opening weekend, it made almost $3 million, which was now, in today's terms, $5 million. Um, in the U.S., it grossed well, almost $142 million, which is, in today's terms, $242 million. And then worldwide, it grossed almost $364,000. So that's $622 million. So that's a lot. Yeah. That is a lot. So this oh, movie yeah. came out. And What's that? It had heavy hitters voicing some of the characters in it. I mean, it had Mel Gibson, Dwayne John Smith, Christian Bale, who did Thomas, um, Bill Co Billy Con Connolly, which he was pretty big back then, I think, and Linda Hunt, and David Ogden Sowers of MASH fame. So, I mean, it has some pretty big heavy hitters in there. Yeah. I, this came out, I remember this when it came out because I was getting ready to turn eight and my grandma and grandpa took me to see it for my birthday. It was a birthday present from them. So I got to go with them. And they, yeah, I, my favorite part of this movie is when she sings, um, can you paint with the colors of the wind? I love that scene. And I love that song. It's such a good song. Um, yeah, so. I don't know. What's your favorite part? My favorite part, I don't know. I, I honestly, I like when she saves John Smith and she stops them from mm -hmm. kind of fighting. Like, I just, like, both sides. Even though he kind of takes the, he takes over and tries to take it upon himself to start the war. But I feel like, I don't know, I like that scene where she does save him and she talks sense at least into her father. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I like that part. Yeah, that's good. Um, and it says the Disney executives had all the secondary animal characters, such as Nico and Flit, lose all of their dialogue in order to make this movie a bit more serious. Well, that's like a, for a child's movie, it was pretty serious anyway. It was, it was. And well, they had a third character for her. They had a third animal character that was supposed to be her sidekick, and it was supposed to have been voiced by John Candy. And it was a turkey, I think. Yeah. And they cut it because I forget why they cut it, but they cut that, that character out of the movie mm -hmm. for some reason. Yeah. It says it's the first animated Disney movie to have an interracial r romance, mm -hmm. um, which of course, which this is not a history lesson. Neither one yeah. of these, movies, well, we're not doing a history lesson here today. These are just movies. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure they got a lot of, I'm sure they had a lot of issues with their romance back then anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the first movie to feature Mel Gibson singing. Yes, I saw that too. And I, because I knew I could tell that that was his voice, but I don't, I didn't know he sang. And I guess him and Irene Bedard, I think that's how you pronounce it, who played Pocahontas, they were both also the physical models for the rotoscoping. I guess is what they called it of the animated, their animated characters. So they mm -hmm. were actually, and Christian Bale, I think I'm pretty sure was his rotoscoping too for Thomas. Um, but yeah, and, but I didn't know this, Pocahontas, I, I guess I never thought about it, but Pocahontas was one of the only two Disney princesses to be born in America, the other being Tiana from The Princess and the Frog, which yep. I never even, I don't know, I guess I never thought about it. Yeah, they, well, they had said something, like, with Frozen, she was, like, the second princess to, um, with Snow, because Mulan was the other, but I was like, no, Beauty and the Beast, they had snow in it. So I don't know where. Sometimes you got to be really careful when you read your facts. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, do, I do think that those are the only two American born princesses. I'm, I'm pretty sure that fact is correct. 
Well, and I guess it's pretty, I didn't know this either, but it, this movie's release date, so June 23rd of 1995, was actually the real Pocahontas's birthday. So they released it on her real birthday, which is well, kind that- of a cool thing. Yeah, that is cool that they did that. And I think the first time, or they showed it in Central Park, I think, or they had a big to-do in Central Park with it, I think. Okay. Um, but this is, this movie and Avatar are so, have you ever seen Avatar? I've seen bits and pieces, to be honest. It's if I'm going to tell so, the truth. yeah, it is so similar. The storyline, and I don't know why people don't see it. They are so similar. Like, they have the tree, the trees are similar in Avatar as in this. Like, they go and visit this tree. Um, you know, they're coming to the planet, which, you know, with this, they're coming to a new land to mine gold. That's what they're trying to do in Avatar. Um, yeah, it's very similar. Uh, the only thing, I guess, at the end is John Smith leaves, but he has to leave because he was injured. So he's got to go get help. Mm-hmm. He's got to go get taken care of. And I'm... Like, he wanted her to come with him, and she stayed. And I guess the real Pocahontas actually was married to Cocolum for a little bit before she married John Rolfe. Mm-hmm. But in this movie, Cocolum dies. He gets shot by Thomas. Yeah, because he's so serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. he's serious, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just, I know, like, when I was a kid, I had, like, a little sticker thing where you, like, put the stickers on and you can make different scenes. I had that. I had a watch, and then the second hand was the leaves, and so it would go around. And the, I don't know. I had a few things that were Pocahontas, because as a kid, I remember really liking this movie. And there's actually um, a live action version that I, I wish I could have found it. Um, that I really enjoyed too. If I can find it, I'll link it below later on. The, and it's kind of, it depicts it more of what really happened. Mm-hmm. Which her story is kind of interesting too. I mean, her real life story. But in this movie, obviously it is very fictitious and it's done more for dramatic purposes. Right. The way they do things. So. Well, the ultimate story is just trying to unite two different cultures uh, which, I mean, when you have such extreme on each each side of the spectrum, I mean, it was very extreme for both mm-hmm. sides to see each other. Um, you know, they think that the Native Americans are savage and which, I mean, you could kind of, you know, um, you know, coming over, you'd see like how they live and stuff. And you're like used to using the privy and, you know, like that sort of thing. And you have a little bit more like with doctors and things like that, I'm sure. And I'm sure that they saw that and was like, what the heck? Why don't you just live off the land? Like we do, like you would just be better off. Mm-hmm. Well, like when he said, we're looking for gold, yeah. she showed a ear of corn and like, yeah, gold, it comes from the ground. I mean, to them, that was gold. Like to them, yeah. that was everything. I mean, if they didn't have that, they wouldn't eat. Right. You know, oh, yeah, they do everything with corn. Everything mm-hmm. they do. I mean, you can do so much. I saw uh, a thing one time where um, they grow cucumbers at the base and then the corn stalk. And because then the cucumbers keep the weeds from growing and then the corn stalk. And then they grow the tomatoes because the tomatoes can grow up around the corn stalk. So they are very innovative for sure. And we probably had a lot to learn. Well, I'm sure we had a lot to learn from them. But all they could think about was the gold. Unfortunately. Well, and I thought it was interesting, too. Like, when they came and he, when he, when John Smith first realized, or, rec- well, not recognizes, but spots Pocahontas. And he's mm-hmm. trying to talk to her. I mean, I, I don't know. Kind of, I don't know why it bothers me and why I care so much. But I feel like she should not have been speaking English. Because that's not what would have happened. I mean, well, I, I think in real terms. But, again, this is fictitious. Right. So... Well, the thing with that is, too, if you, because I remember thinking, like, before I started watching, I'm like, she should, like you said, she shouldn't even have been talking to him. And, but if you remember, she talks to the tree and uh, Mother Willow, sorry, she talks to her and she says, listen with your heart. So when she saw, sees John Smith, she's saying that again to herself, listen with your heart. So it's almost like um, the spirit gods are translating for them. So that's kind of how the, I interpret it for the movie. That's why, that's what I'm going to go with. <laughs> <laughs> well, in reality, 
reality, I think that that would definitely put a damper on how the two would come together. Like, even the English side and the Native American side, yeah. obviously, there's a huge language barrier there. Right. You know, yeah. so how are you supposed to communicate with the people? If, right. You know, I don't know. Well, even, even the, the spirit guides or the wind, whichever way you want to go with it, even they told her that there's clouds mm -hmm. in the sky odd clouds and so that's how she even knew that they were there and so that's why it kind of made sense that she was able and she was able to communicate with john smith it was not necessarily she could actually understand his words but she could maybe more feel what he was saying and interpret it that way but yeah i mean with it being a children's movie of course they have to do what they can so that well and, it, yeah. and in real life obviously which they could not do this on a children's movie but she would have been, like, Pocahontas would have been, I guess they said that she probably, in real life, she probably would have been topless and covered in tribal tattoos. Mm -hmm. Even her face. Right. So, that's interesting to, to mm -hmm. think about. I mean, if... Well, she has a tattoo on her arm in the movie. Tattoo, yep. Yeah. So, they did try to do a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep true to that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a cute movie. Uh like old Pocahontas. <laughs> well, watching it as an adult, because I know, like, it even, I mean, it's not one of my most favorite or favorite Disney movie, but it's watching it again as an adult, it's really not as bad as what I thought it was. It's, I mean, it is a good movie. It's a cute movie. Yeah, I agree. All right, so Braveheart, it came out the same year. Yeah, the 24th of May in 1995. Its budget was obviously bigger. Now, Mel Gibson actually directed this one and starred in it. And I guess he kept his... Obviously, he was in a lot of the scenes, but I think he tried to do most of his scenes only in, like, three takes so that he could be behind the camera more. But anyway, the release date was May 24th. It was budgeted for $72 million. Um, opening weekend, it made $10 million which in today's terms would be $17 million. Um, in the U.S., it grows $76 million, which in today's money would be $130 million. And worldwide, it did $212 million, and that would be $362 million today. So not a bad movie for Mr. Mel Gibson. No. No, had a big year. And, well, that that's pretty good for opening weekend, $10 million. That's, I mean, we've been doing this for a month now, and... Um, they have a pretty hard time on opening weekends, I feel like, a lot of these. But this one, I thought, did pretty good for opening weekend. Yeah. Um, several major battle scenes had to be reshot because extras were wearing sunglasses and wristwatches. I love that. Because that, back in, what, 13-whatever, that would not have been happening. Obviously not. <laughs> well, and again, there was another, even just going back to, you know, Pocahontas, there was a lot of you know, fictional, you know, inaccuracies or whatever. Like, yeah. and he always thought that he was a decade too old to be playing William Wallace because he was nearly 40 when he played this role. And I guess William Wallace was only in his 20s. So, I mean, and like you said with the extras, there was 100 or 1,600 of them on set. I mean, many, didn't at, have to keep track of 1,600 yeah. extras. And any sure time. And make sure they're doing like what you need them to be doing at the you know exact moment you need. That'd be really hard. I think. Well, and then um, I guess the, out of all of the intenseness, like the fighting and stuff, the only injury they had was a broken nose, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. That but is. I think they put on two stunt specialists or whatever because there were so many scenes and there were so many people. He brought he paid two to come on and kind of show them and you know make sure that they were getting the battle scenes correct and everything and how to try to do it safely obviously right yeah it says um talking about that kind of stuff mel gibson was investigated by animal welfare organization which uh was convinced that the fake horses used were real only when one of gibson's assistants proved provided some videotape footage of the location shooting were they convinced otherwise i mean i was sitting there watching the whole time i was like i told tony i was like there's no way there was not an issue with the animal stuff because this was just 
crazy. Like the way they were flipping them over and jabbing them. And well, the scene where he jumps out and jumps into the water, like that scene, uh, that, whew, yeah. It's <laughs> well, we talked about. I mean, because I mean, you don't think about because in the battle scenes they weren't going after the peep the riders. They were going off after the horses to get the riders off, and then right. they took care of the riders. Like yeah. after that, but they went after the horses to you know take not let them be able to move and stuff. So it's kind of like wow. Because in most movies you don't see that, but in this right. one, and that's probably how real battle probably went down. I mean in reality probably a lot worse but yeah no and they even said when that horse felt when he jumped into the water the horse didn't move his legs at all and then he kind of floated on his side and they were like that's very unhorse like behavior that never would have happened right but they did use fake horses that were like they weighed quite a bit i'm just glad i I don't want to be one of those people, but I'm, I mean, these animals, they seriously, they don't ask to be in these movies. Like we just, I mean, we make movies about like free Willy, that sort of thing. And I'm just like, come on now. We have enough actors and stuff that in like children actors, I don't even like children actors. I think that's just exploiting. And I don't know that's just a whole other thing to get into. But <laughs> I just sometimes have issues. Um, so what was your favorite scene? Your favorite part? I had two. I had his speech that he gives mm -hmm. to the men. And then when Murrin gives him the thistle back. Or he gives Murrin the oh, thistle back. Yeah. To him as a so kid. I love it. it. I think that that's pretty cool. It, yeah. For me, it brings their relationship full circle, I mm -hmm. think. Which I think is pretty yeah. cool. Well, she was originally supposed to give him my two favorite parts. Yeah. Well, she was originally supposed to give him a rose, but a rose is actually like the symbol for the King of England. So they said that would be kind of contradicting for everything that the movie stands for mm -hmm. or the storyline. Um, so, of course, just to be funny, I like the part where they lift up their kilts. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that, I thought that was pretty funny. I was like, oh, that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Sticking to the other side. <laughs> yeah. So I was like that. I liked it. I thought it was kind of fun just to mess around and that sort of thing. Cause they, man, they hated the Scottish and I mean, there's a lot that they do to them to prove it. So, but you know, doing a little flash show is nothing compared to what they're doing to them. Yeah, um, but my favorite scene and I actually found it word for word so that I didn't mess it up. But my favorite scene was um, when Rob, Robert the Bruce is talking to his father. He says, I have nothing. Men fight for me because if they do not, I throw them off my land and I starve their wives and their children. Those men who bled the ground red at Falkirk, they fought for William Wallace and he fights for something that I never had. And I took it from him when I betrayed him. I saw it in his face on the battlefield and it's tearing me apart. All men, and then his father says, all men betray all lose heart i don't want to lose heart. that part right there when he says i don't want to lose heart like that just oh it stabbed me <laughs> i was like oh my goodness but he says i don't want to lose heart i want to believe as he does i love that part i just i don't know it really it hit me in the feels for sure i was like oh i love that <laughs> so that yeah. was my favorite that's a pretty awesome scene. And I just, because yeah. I've seen that scene before, like when I see that movie on TV, that scene has been on, like when he does betray him, like when William runs after the guy on the horse and it ends up being him and you see the look on William Wallace's face and you're like, and like I felt, like I felt the same way. I was like, oh my gosh, like he really just betrayed him. Mm -hmm. Like you see the two leaders walk away from him too when he's flagging them down. Yeah. Telling them to attack, and they they literally look at him and they they take their troops away, and yeah. then he does that to him, and it's like man, like two big blows within what minutes? Yeah, to like just deflate him. Well, and, and I'm just glad that I mean they were all haunted by it afterwards, though, which is good, you know. And they you don't do that to your own man, like you know these what they were fighting for is just they needed that freedom like the part tony's like did you pay attention to that where the king had put it back in law where the lords could go and take the wives on their wedding night and we get to see that in the movie happen 
um, where he goes and takes the wife. And then that's the whole reason why Wallace uh, marries in secret is because he's, he's not going to share his wife. There's just no way. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, and that's kind of what gets us all started And that. So like, you know, the, she, they um, attempt to assault her. And of course she assaults them back, rightfully so. And of course, you know, men do not ever back then. They just didn't see it. Like, well, even the part where he's like, you look like my daughter, like that creeped me out. And I'm like, that's so gross. Like you're going to attack a woman and then let alone it look like your daughter. That's disgusting. And yeah, well then like, of course they kill her and the user is bait and everything. And he comes, Wallace comes back. Um, when he does get, to, I think the guy that did it, he's the magistrate. Is that what they call him? Yes, he was the magistrate. Yep. Yeah, so basically like the sheriff of that little, um, what do they call it? Like the, the little village. I don't, that's all they called it, though. The Hamlet type thing? Is that? No. No. But he, so, so yeah, he's kind of like the sheriff. He kind of keeps them under control, make sure they don't, you know, try to rise up against anything. Um, but whenever Wallace gets to slit his throat like he did hers... Um, just the acting in that moment was really good because you could just see it on his face as like, this is not satisfaction and doing this to him is not bringing her back. Like you just in that moment, you could just see all of that on his face, which I really liked. Um, so yeah, they do, they rise up, they have a rebellion and people across the land are here. I wish they would have done more, a little more of those rumors. Cause in his speech, he says, yeah, and I shoot fireballs from my eyes. See that? Yep. Because they both like that's not William Wallace. Because I guess in real life he was six oh, five. Oh. In real, like the real William Wallace was six Which five. Which is tall for a man back then. Especially back then. Well, and even King Edward the First, they called him Longshanks, which meant long legs, because he himself was six two, which mm -hmm. was also very large for back then. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean. That, because again, we talked about how Mel is only, what, 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 so that's mm -hmm. kind of, yeah, it's crazy that, I mean, that's a good sh being a lot shorter than what really he's supposed to really be portraying. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, and I think they made a big, like, because then obviously we know what happened to him in real life and how it all ended for him and what they did to him at the end, and I think that just set... Because I don't know, for those of you out there that are watching that have watched, or like this, like his story and like Robert the Bruce, he, that's the, that's what the Outlaw King on, I think it's Netflix, is about. After the, all of the William Wallace stuff happens and they spread him out and all that, he takes over and he kind of takes over the fight for him. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of, and that just stirs people up when they do that to him. Like it just, I think it kind of keeps kind of keeps stoking the fire a little bit right so. well and then i know like today the scottish don't like how this m movie portrayed um robert because they said i guess they're making in the movie they kind of making it out to be a little on the bad side but they i guess he's really did well wallace paved the way for the freedom so he kind of made way for this to happen and then i think what robert just kind of took over he did after they yeah he kind of well and i yeah because i think they were closer than what the movie made them seem to like i don't know but yeah because yeah. i know you said because like you said they were kind of upset how he was portrayed and they really feel like he did that yeah and they show which, I don't know, like, after watching it, I'm going to have to sit down and kind of look, do a little bit of history reading. Because um, they show where Wallace has a relationship with the princess. And it just, I don't, like, is that, did that really happen? It did not. Because she did not come there oh, right. until, until, like, 1306? Yeah, it was later. I remember yeah, reading it now. He had died years before that. So they were never in the same... No, right. Well, I kind of figured maybe they did that whole thing. Because, you know, his wife was killed. And then that was his big thing. Was like, I just want to get married and have a farm. And have children. Like, like, that's all he wanted. He just wanted that freedom to have that. So I think kind of... It's kind of like romanticizing it. To let him be with the princess. Because she says to the king... Um, Basically, I, I'm pregnant with hit, with somebody else's child, and I think that was just a way to kind of like let it look like Wallace's bloodline continues, 
when it really didn't. I mean, maybe you never know. I mean, back See, then, I that it was his, and that's what she was telling him. Well, in the movie, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. but in real life, right. That didn't happen in real life. They were never in the same area at the same time. He, by the time she came over, he was already gone, and so was the king, I think, yeah. what I read. And I like the um, Ireland, uh, right? Is that the guy, the crazy one? Oh, yeah, the Irish. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Irish, yeah. I loved him. And, well, it was funny because, like, when he was, like, getting ready to shoot the deer... He I sees him coming at him. him. I'm like, what? You said no. Like, and here the other guy, like, they did that whole scene was really cool how they did that because they did make it look like he yeah. was going to, he was helping with the deer when in reality he was coming to Wallace and going to kill him. And, um, you know, plus his childhood friend stuck by his side the whole time, too. Mm-hmm. Which I thought that was kind of a cool reunion, how they reunited, too. How they did the rock thing. He's like, I should have remembered the rocks. I forgot about the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> Get them right in the forehead. Yeah. Like, I forgot about the rocks. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, I'm pretty. Yeah. I mean, even though it was a very gruesome movie, there were still times of, co- like, comedy or, you know, lighter. Yeah. Lighter lines, lighter scenes, like, you know. Yeah. But. Yeah, like the scene um, where they're in the very, very beginning where um, Wallace's dad and brother go to that barn and all those men, men and the children are all hung. And yeah. they said those were real actors. They had like suspended them and did that whole, whew, I just, that's a whole other, you know, like letting, you know, whoever let that kid be in that scene and see all that. Because I was, even though that kid's probably told like, this is all fake. Like, I still feel like that would be traumatizing for a child. Mm-hmm. I agree. I mean, I think movies like that, I think that's why, like, we talked about last time, like, when we talked about the Goonies, just kids doing scenes like that, kids cussing, like, you not just, you know, certain words, but I'm talking, like, the bigger ones, like the F word and things like that, or GD. Like, I feel like, I don't know, that's not a good, I don't know. I personally would not let my kid do that. Yeah. What? Now, was I didn't look at this. Look this up. Was uh, King Edward's son rumored to be gay? Because in the movie they portray him that way. I think so because I think even in this movie they portrayed him to be older just so that they could do that, and I think that was kind of a fictitious uh, thing too. I think. Okay. I don't okay. think there was much. Yeah, I don't think there was much to that. Yeah. I think because I did see that. I did read that they. Yeah. They made the character much older just so they could do that. Okay. Yeah, and then, like, the dad throws his lover out the window, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> Don't mess around with dad. That's one way to take care of the situation, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I just, I mean, people back then were so savage, and, like, that whole thing with taking the lords to take the wives, you know, that bugs me, because I'm like, you all already have enough, and then because I told Tony, I was like, well, what happens if they impregnate her on that night? That's it. And he's like, well, that's the whole point. Because if they won't leave the land, if the Scottish won't leave the land, then they'll just fill the women up with their own children. And eventually there won't be any Scottish left. Well, I think, well and I think I read that that in real life would never have happened because the people would never have allowed that to happen. Like the people would have risen up way before they did that if they would have allowed that. Let me find it so I can read what it really says because I don't want to get it wrong. But I think they did talk about that yeah. from what I read. But I can't remember exactly how it was. I don't know. Just, I think about just like how dirty everything was back then and unclean. <laughs> I mean, every time you saw Wallace, he was so dirty. Even as a child, he was so dirty. I that too. I was like, dad, gone. Like, are there not any like Pawns or, you know. Like the cleanest was whenever he takes a ride on the horse with his girl. <laughs> and they're, they're in the rain. That's probably like the cleanest you see. Okay, so it says Prime Noctis, which I guess is what they call that, in which nobleman has the right to have sex with a common man's bride on her wedding night, has never been used in the history of Britain or Ireland. It would have encouraged rebellions in newly conquered territories that were already difficult to govern. It was more common on the continent, notably France. So. I could see that. 
what or French back in the day. They I were guess. definitely, I guess out of everyone, they were the most liberal with things mm-hmm. like that. They were, well, and like, um, I don't know if you ever watched The Duchess, Georgina, where does, I can't think of where they're at, but um, with her back then, it, once you sired an heir, you were pretty, as, even as a woman, you were free to have um an affair like you were allowed but up until then you could you had to sire an heir and then you could have that affair um of course men could just do whatever they wanted um but you know they i don't know it's just it's crazy how they just back then they looked at women as objects and what's the thing like killing his girl what's her name they killed her and she (laughs) Well, because they said an assault on the king's men wasn't basically an assault on themselves or on the king himself. Yeah. Well, guess what? (laughs) Started started a problem for everybody. And I guess William Wallace really did. Did he marry a Marion? A Marion, and they called her Murrin not to get it mixed up with Robin. um, Yeah. Yeah. Because he even, I mean, with the whole, you know, with the whole history thing, he, Mel Gibson said that some people said that in telling the story, we messed up history. It doesn't bother me because what I'm giving you is a cinematic experience. And I think films are there first to entertain, then teach, then inspire. There probably were historical inaccuracies, quite a few, but maybe there weren't. Who's to say? Because there was very little history about the man. It wasn't necessarily authentic, and some of the stuff I read about him, he wasn't as nice as he was on film. We romanticized it a bit, but that's the language of film. You have to make it cinematically acceptable. Actually, he was a monster. He always smelled a smoke because he was always burning people's villages down. He was like what the Vikings called a berserker, but we kind of shifted the balance a bit because somebody's got to be the good guy and someone's got, or somebody the bad guy, and every story has its own point of view. That was our bias. Yeah. So I, thought, I mean, a good way to put it. I mean, he's basically telling you, hey, so, yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with that. I think that's a good way to put it. Um, and that's with any historical TV show or um, I know with, like, The Crown, They, I, from what I've heard, they've tried to be really careful with it. But all oh, that's coming from them anyway, from the British family. So even what they would tell them, is that really what happened? You kind of... Oh. So that's why with the crown, I feel like that's a slippery slope to be filming right now because obviously the queen is still alive. Prince Charles is still alive. Prince Philip is still alive. And it's like, you've got all these people. I mean, and I know, I feel like it hasn't really gotten controversy, so to speak until this past, like this new season. So I don't know what the way things are being portrayed. So it's hard to say. Yeah. Um, I don't, I just wish that, I understand why they can't show this movie in school, but, um, you know, it's like shows like The Tudors and the movies like this, Braveheart and Troy, those sorts of movies are what helped me as an adult to want to look into this stuff further and see, like, how things really did happen. Like, yeah, this movie, like, it's just for entertainment purposes. Ultimately, that's what this is for. Now, because I've watched this and I was entertained by it, now I want to know what really did happen. So it does, like, spark something for the audience to want to learn more. And I just, I love when these historic, I'm such a sucker for this stuff. (laughs) I'm I'm such a, I'm so disappointed I didn't get, I didn't watch this until now. Um, But yeah, I mean, there's a, there was a story on Netflix about a, a girl that's a king. She becomes a king and she was a lesbian and they talk about that and uh, the Danish girl, there's that movie. I think I talked to you about that. There's Danish girl on Netflix and um, she's as recorded as they can get it is like the first transgender in history. And the guy that plays that is the guy that played in uh, the Stephen Hawking movie. Um, yeah, I can't even think of it, but yeah. So he's he's a pretty well known actor. He played in um, the Harry Potter movie, Terror, the Beasts and Where to Find Them. Oh, Eddie Redmayne. I think so. I think yeah, I think it's Eddie Redmayne. I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I just, I'm such a sucker for this stuff. I could, 
I'll probably end up watching this a few more times. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. Eddie Redmayne. Yeah. And he's, he's, he's played, played in a few big roles. But he did the Danish girl. Oh, he's been really big. The past, well, back in, yeah, he's, but he's another one of those, I feel like those actors that off topic again, but he, he is undervalued. <laughs> I think it's a, well, I Stanley think. Tucci, look at Stanley Tucci, man. He's, oh man, we got to do something on him. I love him. He's just, I put him up there with, um, oh, now I can't. Robin uh, Williams. Robin, Robin Williams. Williams. Yeah. And, um, Professor Snape. <laughs> These names escape me. Oh, no. I, I mean, he was another one, man. He didn't get near the credit he deserved for his work. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Really? Well, and John Goodman. John Goodman, man, like, those, wow. yeah, those are actors that you breed. Like, you do not teach that. You cannot, like, that's something that's in your blood, and you can just roll it out and present it, and you're just done. So... <laughs> Almost like the method actors. Like I feel like the more method you are, the better you are. I, mm -hmm. I just like Mel Gibson. I feel like he. I don't think he would go as method as let's say Christian Bale. Mm -hmm. He goes pretty method when he does his acting. Like he goes full force into it. And Matthew McConaughey. But well, it's just improv. When you're good at that, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've and I've been around people like just like in my personal life have been around people like that that are just really witty and just can you know, let it go. I don't know. I just feel like I'm always so uptight about stuff. I just got to be like <laughs> Yeah. I, I even know I love goofiness. I get one-liners in there every once in a while. It doesn't happen very often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. I mean, like whoa, did you really just say that? Like, wow, that was pretty good. Uh, I'll never forget one time I was working at Subway and um, I had to take the trash out back and the manager was working with me that night and she said, um, she's like, it's dark out there. And I said, it's okay, I have night vision. Like, just rolled it right off the cuff. It was perfect. And I said it so, like, serious. And afterwards i busted out laughing like once the moment was gone i'm like this is perfect like i never get these in <laughs> that's what, yep you gotta get them when you can like they're my uh I, one of my friends and i we have a running joke about me going and getting her a thick burger from hardy's well i think it was when we had like the 22 inches of snow or i mean there was there was quite a bit of snow on the ground and she texts me and she's like hey i want a thick burger and i said okay, let me go hitch up the, the, you know, the team and I'll be right on it. You know, <laughs> like, he laughed so hard at that. He was like, we almost died. We were laughing so hard. He sent that back. So comical. If people could just, you know, hear it. I got to get it in every, like, even when I was at Christmas, <laughs> one of my family members was watching Gunsmoke and he was like, yeah, it's a rerun. I was like, oh, I was like, it's not a new one? You mean they don't have new ones of these yet? Like, you know, knowing full well. I mean, it's black and white, you know. Yep. I get them in every once in a while. <laughs> I'm very happy about it, but I got it in. Yeah, yep. every once in a while. But, yeah. And it's nice to see that with the actors when they when they let their little quirks come out. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like Robin Williams was the king of that. Oh, like, just, nobody he just can. there, yeah. He, no one can touch him with improv and just, yeah. Yeah. I don't think anybody can touch him. No one's in the realm. Mm -mm. Nope. All right. Well, that was Pocahontas and Braveheart. We ask you all to subscribe. Nothing crazy happens when you subscribe. I think, like, some people, like, I've had friends of mine be like, because some people are just not YouTube people. Like, I like to watch YouTube. I, I have a lot of people that I watch on YouTube, and so doesn't Shelly. Um, so nothing crazy happens. Like, I think some people are, like, subscribe. Because that kind of, in real terms, means, like, you're going to pay for something, and you're going to have to, like, have, like, this thing. No. What, really what it is, yeah, is whenever, like, on Facebook, if you just like a page, that's pretty much what it is. You're just liking our channel. It's just a way to like our channel when you subscribe. Um, if you like or dislike our video, that just shows engagement. If you comment, that shows engagement. And that does help us because it um, 
the uh, analytics or whatever one well, behind the scenes what Shelly and I see it just kind of lets us know like how long you're watching um, mm -hmm. that sort of thing so we just kind of you know if you subscribe it does help us um, our goal is Let's see, we've been doing this for a month now, so we're down 11 months. We're hoping we'd like to have a 1,000 subscribers in a year's time. That would be really nice. That would be a nice goal to have. Um, but we appreciate all 22 because we're holding on strong with you 22. Yes, we have. We, we love every one of you. Yes, yeah, so we really appreciate you all. Um, Tony, my husband, is our true fan. <laughs> <laughs> he has, uh, Shelly and I talked about this earlier. Uh, he did ask us to do... Um, Karate Kid. So I think we are going to look into doing that. Um, we have so, we have something behind the scenes we're working on. It's just taking a little bit of time. Um, mm -hmm. So we do we're you know we we do plan and we do uh, we try to think of you as an audience. Um, but if there are things that you really would like for us to do, please comment. We'll definitely do them. Um, and if there's something particular you want us to talk about in that movie, we can do that too. If you have, I mean, we can always, we, we can, you know, we have an email. If you look in our description, you can always email us. If you don't want to be public like that, that's fine too. We have an email. All of that's in our description. Um, so yeah, just please like and subscribe to this channel. And until next time, that's it in a nutshell.